training, common sense, and instinct. On the morning of September 14th, Mr. Elbeck's police training told him to be cautious. Common sense told him that a former fighting dog with no leash, no supervision, meant no control. And once his former fighting dog began charging at Mr. Elbeck, his son, and Goldie, getting closer and closer, his instinct told him to gather evidence. Members of the panel, now it's your turn. It's your turn to consider the evidence, to draw on your real world training, to use your common sense, and to trust your instincts to do the right thing. The state had the burden in this case. That means the state had to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Elbeck is guilty. Mr. Elbeck was not required to prove his innocence. And as a matter of fact, as he sits here, he's presumed innocent. He didn't have to call any witnesses. He didn't have to show you any evidence, but he did. Because throughout this trial, Mr. Elbeck sat before you accused of crimes he simply did not commit. You got to learn a little bit about Mr. Elbeck. You learned that he was a police officer for 35 years before he retired. Throughout his career, he was promoted several times. He investigated homicide cases, made some major drug busts. But when he took that stand and I asked him what his greatest accomplishment was, it had nothing to do with the promotions or the homicide investigations or the drug busts. One of his proudest moments was receiving an award from the Humane Society. Excuse me, counsel. Yes. I'd like to ask you a question. Um, when your client testified, he denied knowing anything about posting on the Happy Hunting website. Uh, how can you explain how we should believe him if he overtly did not admit to an act he clearly did and the state had ample proof that he did it? Your Honor, my client admitted that he's not very versed in technology. So I imagine that he did not recall at that specific moment of each time he visited the site of Happy Hunting. But how, don't you think he would remember posting on it and posting what he did? Your Honor, being so new to technology, I, I, I would doubt that he would, he would remember each time he visited a site or posted something on a site. Thank you. He received this award from the Humane Society because he helped pass a law to make it a felony to hurt a police animal. Now, you learned that a few months before September 14th, Ms. Pawson adopted a pit bull. Now, I want to be clear. Not all pit bulls are the same. They aren't all dangerous. They all don't have a tendency to be aggressive. Officer Danger was right. It's all about how they're trained. Well, we know how this pit bull was trained. Ms. Pawson told you that this pit bull was unfit for adoption, that this pit bull would be likely euthanized. Because this pit bull came from a dog fighting house, a place where dogs were trained to be dangerous, trained to be aggressive, trained to kill other dogs. Mr. Elvick knows all too well about what former fighting dogs can do. He told you that during his time as a police officer, some of the worst things he saw were pit bull maulings. I have another question to ask you. Um, was there any evidence in the record that Pitt had ever been aggressive in the four months he was in the custody of Ms. Pawson? No, Your Honor, there's no, record, uh, there's no evidence of that. And as a matter of fact, between the two dogs, between Goldie and Pitt, isn't it accurate that Goldie has actually been trained to kill by your client? Your Honor, Goldie has been trained to hunt small game, pheasants, rabbits. And Mr. Elvick never trained Goldie to attack animals her size or larger. But when she attacks the smaller ones, she's trained to kill? And he's posted some of his hunting on the Happy Hunting website. Uh, correct, Your Honor. Mr. Elvick uses a combination of guns and dogs to, use, to, to hunt. So when this 
former fighting dog, was led outside on the morning of September 14th. Mr. Elvick knew to be cautious. Pitt wasn't on a leash. His owner was nowhere to be found. There was nothing, there was no gate, no fence separating this former fighting dog from Mr. Elvick, his son, and Goldie. So Mr. Elvick gave Goldie the whistle command for stay. But when this former fighting dog started to approach Mr. Elvick and his son, getting closer and closer, Goldie instinctively went into defensive mode. Mr. Elvick's police instinct also took over, the instinct to gather evidence. He already had a video camera that he was using to film Goldie's warm-up, so he asked Mikey Jr. to use that video camera to record what was going on so that they would have proof of what this pit bull was capable of. Why didn't he stop the fight instead of videotaping it? Because he, he had his whistle. Why didn't he abandon this before it ever started? That's a question. Your Honor, the, the record shows that Goldie instinctively went into this defensive mode and perhaps ignored the whistle commands coming from Mr. Elvick. And once this fight started, the safest thing he could do was try to command Goldie to, and command Goldie to retreat and separate this fight. It would be unsafe for him to go into this dog fight and try to separate the dogs. Why did he only wait to do that until Mrs. Pawson came out? The testimony indicates that he was there watching this fight and pumping his fist rather than actually trying to stop it with a whistle until the other dog arrived. Two points on that, Your Honor. First of all, this was, from the point of view of Ms. Pawson, this was a highly emotionally charged event. She was, uh, she was running towards, the, uh, towards where these two dogs were, screaming, and just moments before, she was blinded by the sun in her eyes. So she could, be, could have been confused as to what this, um, what this cheering that she claimed uh, came coming from Mr. Elvick. Um, the second point is that Mr. Elvick wasn't cheering these dogs on. He was trying to command Goldie to, uh, to break off the fight and to retreat. Unfortunately, this video recording, which was handed over to the state, was somehow misplaced and was not shown to you. But you were still able to see what this pit bull was capable of. Goldie was left with a broken leg, bite wounds around her face, and a gash right above her eye. Mr. Elvick has been charged with three serious crimes. Conspiracy to engage in animal fighting, engaging in animal fighting, and endangering the welfare of a minor. Now, in order for the state to meet its burden, they have to prove each and every element of each and every offense beyond a reasonable doubt. If they fail to prove just one element beyond a reasonable doubt, then you should find Mr. Elbeck not guilty on that charge. As to count one, conspiracy to engage in animal fighting. As the panel knows, a person commits the crime of conspiracy to engage in animal fighting. If the person with the intent to commit the crime of engaging in animal fighting agrees with one or more persons to commit the crime of animal fighting. So in order for the state to meet its burden, it has to prove two separate elements. First, intent to commit the crime of engaging animal, animal fighting. And second, an agreement with another person. And the state has failed to prove both. Counsel, um, I understand that your position is that uh, Mikey Jr. is not credible, but are you claiming that the evidence doesn't show that his father asked him to get out the video camera before uh, the pit even appeared on the scene? Isn't, you would agree, would you not, that the, the, the willingness of Michael Jr. to, to do something would constitute an agreement, whether it was grudging or otherwise? Well, the agreement has to be coupled with an intent to commit the crime of engaging in animal fighting. And 
Mr. Elbeck's intent for asking Ms., uh, Mikey Jr. to film what was going on was an intent to gather evidence, not... Guys, let me stop you. So sure. your, your claim is that that instruction means actually the reverse of what it says, that the defendant has to, or the, the person who's doing the agreement has to have the intent as well as the person asking them to? I'm sorry, could you clarify your question? In other words, um, in, a, in a traditional conspiracy case where let's say it's an undercover officer that the officer themselves would have to intend to commit the crime? The cons both conspirators have to intend to commit the crime in order for this? No, the, only the person under the laws of this state, only the person who engaged the, in, the agree in the agreement. The state has to show that it was Mr. Elvis conscious objective to cause or to engage in an animal fight. And they're relying on this online post, which Judge Balgan already referred to. But this joke that the state believes to prove intent was just a bad joke. A bad joke posted on a hunting website. And a joke isn't proof of intent. Moreover, there was nothing in this post which showed that there was any planning or preparation to arrange a fight between a golden retriever that's been trained to hunt rabbits, pheasants, other rodents, and a fighting dog, a pit bull, that has been trained to kill other dogs. Counsel, yes. what evidence, other than that the, the dog is unadoptable, is there that this dog, this particular pet, ever attacked another dog? Did it ever attack, for example, in the four months that it lived next door to your client's dog, did it ever attack uh, Goldie? No, there was no evidence of any attack during those four months. We have no idea what happened before those four months. Right, so it would be unreasonable to speculate about it. Well, Officer Danger and Ms. Pawson testified that this pit bull came from a dog fighting house, and I think it's reasonable to infer that this dog was involved in some sort of dog fight. You are aware, counsel, that there are two kinds of dogs in dog fighting that are bait dogs and fighting dogs. I wasn't aware of that, Your Honor. Oh, go ahead. Mikey Jr. testified that on the morning of September 14th, his father told him, we're getting that pit today, you with me? And Mikey Jr.'s response was, sure we will. But if Mikey Jr. is to be believed, then Mr. Elvick would have to be psychic. Because that's the only way that Mr. Elvick would have known that this pit bull would be let outside on the morning of September 14th, that the pit bull would not be on a leash, that the pit bull would be unsupervised, that this pit bull would approach Mr. Elvick, his son, and Goldie, and that this pit bull would attack. But Mr. Elvick was on the stand, and he told you that he had no idea that Pitt was going to be out that morning. He didn't know that Pitt was going to be let outside at that particular time on that particular day. So it would be impossible for him to make any sort of agreement. Wouldn't it be reasonable, however, counsel, for him to believe that the dog would be let out? After all, they lived next door to each other four months. The dog, it is common knowledge that dogs are let out to do their business. And also, I believe Mikey Jr. testified that he saw his father looking out the window. Couldn't we infer that he was waiting for Pitt to come out? There's no evidence that Mr. Elvick knew that on the morning of September 14th, around 6 a.m., that Pitt would be let outside. Ms. Pawson wasn't on a, there's no evidence that Ms. Pawson had this routine schedule of letting out Pitt at a particular time on a particular day. Thank you. Without intent, without an agreement, there is no conspiracy. Moving on to count two, engaging in animal fighting. As the panel knows, a person commits the crime of engaging in animal fighting if that person knowingly promotes, conducts, or participates in, or performs any service in the furtherance of an exhibition of an animal fight. And the law defines exhibition of an animal fight as a public or private display of combat between two or more animals in which the fighting, killing, maiming, or injuring of animals for amusement or gain is a significant feature. There was no exhibition of an animal fight here. There was nothing amusing about what happened. There was nothing to gain 
from what happened. Goldie was left with a broken leg, bite wounds to her face, and a huge gash right above her eye. Nonetheless, the state still believes that Mr. Elvick engaged in animal fighting, and they're relying on the testimony of Ms. Pawson and Mikey Jr. to paint that picture for you. Wouldn't, didn't the testimony indicate that both Ms. Pawson and Mikey Jr. saw him pumping his fist at the time, and that that fact was additionally corroborated by his own witness, his high school buddy, who indicated that that is, in fact, how he reacts when he is uh, receiving amusement from killing and hunting. Respectfully, Your Honor, if I could correct that uh, statement of the record, Ms. Pawson never testified that she saw fist pumping. We only get that testimony from Mikey Jr. Now, Mr. Hirsch told you that Mr. Elvick did this fist pumping whenever uh, he went hunting. And certainly it's possible that Mikey Jr., while on these hunting trips, would know about his father's little, uh, fist pumping tick. So if you couple Mikey Jr.'s interest, bias, prejudice against his father, he would know to use that, test, use that fact against his father. Counselor, couldn't, <clears throat> couldn't the state get to the exhibition part of this with the videotape, however? The fact that, it, I understand your, from your perspective that the videotape was used for evidence. That was his intent for the videotape. But couldn't there also be a decent argument that a videotape was made of a dogfight and that could be an exhibition, could it not? It could, but Your Honor, we have no idea what's on this videotape. The state had the burden to produce it. They had it under their control. We have no idea if this videotape is incriminating. We have no idea if it's exonerating. So at this point, or Your Honor, based on the record, we would only speculate as to what is on this video, videotape. The panel should take into account the witness's ability and opportunity to see, hear, or know the things that they testified about. Now, Ms. Pawson, she told you that she was not there when this all began. She was inside her home. And when she did finally make it outside, she said she was blinded by the sun in her eyes, so she couldn't clearly see what was going on. She also told you that her home is about 50 yards away from where this all started. So it would be impossible for her to clearly hear what was going on from that far away. You know, before we run out of time, I know it's ticking, I'd like you to comment on why you think your client should be found not guilty of endangering the welfare of a minor when he brought his very own son into harm's way. Your Honor, let me move to count three. The state is required to show that Mr. Elvick knowingly and unjustifiably placed his own son in danger of imminent harm. Now, Mr. Elvick testified that he had no idea that Pitt was going to be out that morning, he had no idea that Pitt was going to be let outside at that particular time, and that Pitt would see them at that particular spot in the woods. If anyone placed Mikey Jr. in danger of imminent harm, it was whoever trained Miss Pawson's dog to be a fighting dog. No, after, after Goldie started running towards Pitt, did he not tell Mikey Jr. to run along and with the camera and get close to get evidence of it? and putting him in harm's way, getting him close to this dogfight? Your Honor, I don't believe that there is testimony that Mr. Elbeck told his son to go follow this, uh, to get close to this uh, dogfight. Really, wherever he was, wherever Mikey Jr. was, Mr. Elbeck wanted him to start filming. Mr. Elbeck also did not knowingly and unjustifiably induce, cause, or encourage his own teenage son to engage in unlawful behavior. The only reason that Mikey Jr. filmed what was happening that day was because of Mr. Elbeck's police instinct to gather evidence. Counsel, if, if, he's, if he's this instinctual police officer, why doesn't he just call the cops or animal control as soon as he sees something going on rather than documenting it for whatever purpose on a videotape? Your Honor, you would concede, wouldn't you, that he's at a, he has a 
preconceived bias against this dog and this breed, both for the reasons you said, that he's seen all these terrible maulings and these notes that he's left uh, telling this woman to control her dog. I think you're, I think you're entitled to answer the question. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Um, how do you account for the fact that if your client was at using his police instincts, that uh, he didn't just call the police rather than knowing that this dog was dangerous and having a preconceived idea that pit bulls were really dangerous, just sort of allowed this to happen? Your Honor, Mr. Elvick and his son were in the middle of the woods when this all happened. The safest thing for him to do would be try to break up this dog fight using his whistle, using the, the verbal commands that he trained Goldie with. There's no evidence that Mr. Elvick had a cell phone at the time, and it'd certainly be unreasonable for him to go to his home call the police, come back, and see what happened to his dog. I ask that you find Mr. Elvig not guilty on all counts. Thank you.